Today I have the pleasure of speaking with John Lever. John, you are a shareholder and a founder of Signature Resources, and we brought you in today for something interesting. We want to talk to you as a prospector. Very proud of that title. So how did you find the Signature Resources property, and how did you put this deal together? Finding the property was by chance up in Timmins, um, right place, right time. And the property was introduced to me uh, back in 2003. And uh, I've been, uh, the property's been on my radar since 2003. Was in a position to put the uh, financial package to acquire the property together in 2010 and introduced it to a small little public company uh, called Signature Resources. And of course, I'd like to disclose here that I personally am a shareholder at this time of Signature Resources. And it was, John, you're the one that got me interested in Signature. And with all these gold exploration companies out there, there's gold everywhere in, in Canada. Can you tell me what makes Signature competitive for shareholders out there looking for a gold exploration property? That's a good question because uh, that's the challenge in developing a junior exploration property, a uh, gold property. And it was the, uh, the prompting of Walter Hanich uh, doing his research back in 2003 uh, saying that this property has the opportunity to develop into a big gold camp one day. And, uh, you know, as a prospector, third generation, that's uh, something that's very exciting. And so I pursued it. And uh, I think this is uh, going to be one of Canada's next big gold camps. We often talk to the Investor Intel audience about trust as the new currency. And you referenced Walter Hanisch and the people that you invest in and what gets people interested in investing in a stock. Can you tell us a little bit more about why Walter's research was the catalyst for you getting involved in this deal? Well, Walter and I uh, were introduced to each other in 2003, uh, sorry, 2001, and we worked on a, on a very well-known mining camp called Trelawney. And uh, it wasn't Trelawney's at the time, it was uh, within my family's portfolio. And unfortunately, uh, uh, our loss became somebody else's success, and uh, a very big success. Uh, by Greg Gibson and of course now I am gold has that property but Walter I've always trusted Walter's uh, calm nature and his expertise in the field and uh, when he says John you should do something about acquiring that property or at least move it to the next level uh, I do that. We have often spoken to people over the years too about something we call treasure hunters. There's a lot of geologists out there that have a lot of degrees and they have lots of experience, but then you have those, those chosen few that when they see a property they like, you go, aha, this is a treasure hunter. Would you deem Walter to be a treasure hunter? Walter is one of the most conservative treasure hunters I've ever met in my life, uh, but he is. Uh, he saw this as uh, his golden future and being part of this project uh, will reach um, be a long-reaching uh, uh, property for him and for his legacy. And of course, John, you're a multi-generational uh, prospector. Can you tell us a little bit more about this particular property for Signature and what is appealing to you about it? The appeal on this property was initially the, uh, the, the, the ounces of gold that had been previously reported from drilling. And uh, little guys, little junior guys, uh, prospectors don't come across, usually uh, across properties like this. Usually they're gobbled up by uh, mid-tier, uh, larger uh, tier corporations and sit in their portfolios uh, when they're ready to do development. But this one here, um, this is uh, probably going to be my best, uh, my best success story, uh, maybe, maybe to my retirement. Well, John, I'd like to thank you so much for joining us today and giving us kind of a different perspective on why shareholders get involved in gold exploration companies. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy.